when we talk about who controls a country, the president is usually the first person that comes to mind. But there is other people or group of people working behind the scene with incredible power known as the lobbies. So who are these people? Lobbies are individuals or groups who try to influence decisions made by politicians. They work for businesses, organizations or interest groups and their goal is to persuade government officials to pass law or make decisions that benefit them. And what do these people stand to gain? Quite simple, money and influence. By shaping policies in their favor, they can make huge profits and strengthen their control over the market. Let's zoom into Nigeria to understand this better. Election in Nigeria, just like in many other countries, brings a lot of uncertainty. A new president can mean a new policy, which can either boost or hurt the economy. Businesses and investors watch this change closely to protect their own interests in the country. In 1999, Olusegun Obasanjo ran for the president of Nigeria, having just been released from prison. He has no money to fund his campaign. That was a wealthy businessman who saw an opportunity. He took part in funding Obasanjo's campaign with money and resources. When Obasanjo won, that investment paid off. Obasanjo brought about policies that favors them within business interests. This relationship shows how lobbyists can significantly impact government decision. Now, let's talk about Dangote versus Ibeto. In the early 2000s, Ibeto was importing large quantity of cement, threatening Dangote market share. Dangote used its influence on the passenger to get the government to restrict Ibeto import, effectively pushing Ibeto out of the market and allowing Dangote to dominate. Cement price doubled and Dangote profit so. During President Yahadwa short time in office, he better tried to re-enter the cement market. Yahadwa administration was more lenient, allowing him better to resume operation. Dangote filed a appeal against the government, claiming that Ibeto is gaining on due tax advantage. After a lengthy legal battle, Ibeto won and was compensated for his loss. The federal government was ordered to pay Ibeto company about 40 million US dollars and about 1.9 billion naira for the unjust closure of East Bayou Cement Plant between December 2005 and October 2007. But the challenges for Mbeto didn't end there. Fast forward to 2015 election, Buhari campaign introduced a fundraising idea where every Nigeria could donate a small amount of money. Why this seems like a grassroots effort? A significant portion of this fund came from wealthy individuals, businessmen, and the lives of Dangote, Tony Elimelu, and the late CEO of Asset Bank, about Midway, was the major contributor of this fundraising. Once Buhari won, Dangote used its influence to protect its business interests. A better cement company applied for Forex but was denied. They turned to the black market to source for Forex in order to import cement into the country. Better was arrested for alleged uh, money laundering and some other conspiracy that was tied to him, and his company was closed. Meanwhile, Dangote was reported getting foreign currencies at a favorable rate to build its massive petrochemical refinery. In fact, the NMPC, that is the Nigeria National Petroleum Corporation, had a stake in Dangote refinery, owing about 20% of the share. That's the power of the lobbies. Tony Elumelu and about Wigan, was having Dangote's strategy also leverage their influence in the Buari administration. By supporting Buari campaign, they secure favorable conditions for their businesses. They receive foreign currencies at a subsidized rate from the government, which they then sold on the black market for a significant profit. Returning to Dangote, its influence continued to grow during Buari presidency. The Dangote refinery, a massive project, was rumored to be funded by foreign currency received at a subsidized rate. This project would make Dangote a significant player and the global oil and gas market, further cementing its economic power. And now, under Tunumbu administration, the influence of lobbies remains strong. Tunumbu, a full-time politician with deep connection, has seen the importance of balancing political power with business interests. While the individuals continue to play a crucial role in shaping policies, like Dangote, many are using their influence to secure favorable condition for their enterprise, ensuring that their investments remain protected and profitable. This example illustrates the significant role 
lobbies play in shaping government policies why the president is the official leader lobbies wide substantially power beyond the scene they use their financial resources and influence to secure favorable policies often at the expense of the competition and the market fairness this isn't just nigeria phenomenon in many countries powerful business interests work to shape government policies in their favor this can lead to economic imbalance where a few individuals or companies control significant portion of the market so who really rules a nation why the president holds the official title the power dynamics are far more complex lobbies with their financial clout and strategies influence a crucial role in shaping a nation policies and economic landscape they operate behind the scene ensuring that their interests are protected and their wealth continues to grow understanding the power of lobbies is essential to grappling the true nature of politics and economic power in any country so why the president may be the face of the government it is often the lobbyists who pull the string and shape the future of the nation thank you for watching guys if you found this video insightful please don't forget to click on the like button comment and subscribe to the channel and let us know in the comments who do you think really rules the nation